Okay, in this video, we're going to take a look at um, a different way to solve these. We've learned previous weeks um, how to solve these types of problems by factoring. Um, but this week in lab, we're going to learn that this method can be very useful for us as well because um, the, these polynomials don't always factor. So we're going to use what's called the square root method. So to solve using the square root method, we're going to try to get the x squared by itself. So how do we do that here? We're going to add 9 and add 9 just like what we would do in a linear equation, so then we're going to get x squared equals 9. Now, you can see right here that I have an x squared. Um, how do we get rid of a squared? Well, to get rid of squared, what we're going to do is we're going to take the square root of both sides. So I'm going to put this little square root bar above both sides, and we're going to have x squared here equals, and then we're going to have 9 over here. And now the only other thing we need to make sure we bring is since we're taking the square root of both sides, we need to put a plus or a minus, a plus and a minus in front of this. Again, I'll explain this in a second, um, kind of how we do it using factoring. But if we take a look right here, our square root and our squared are going to cancel out, and we're just going to be left with x is equal to, and then on the right-hand side we have plus or minus, and then take a look over here, what's the square root of 9? You can well, the square root of 9 is 3. So over here are two answers. Now, what does this plus or minus mean? It's really important to recognize that this is two different solutions. So we're going to have x is equal to 3, and then I'm going to use a comma, and then it's also negative 3. Now take a look at this problem up here. x squared minus 9, we learned how to do this problem by factoring. And we know x squared minus 9 is a difference of squares, right? So this is x plus 3 and x minus 3, and then we would set those each equal to, and we'd do x plus 3 equals 0, which would give us x equals negative 3, right? We would subtract 3 from both sides, and then we would set this one equal to 0, and we get x minus 3 equals 0. We would add 3 to both sides, and we would get x equals positive 3. So you see, we got two answers when we solve by factoring. Um, using this method, we also get two answers. You just really have to make sure that you put a plus or a minus in front of that square root. So now we're going to go down and take a look at another example. So um, again, we could do this one by factoring as well, but uh, we are going to solve it using the square root method. So what we're going to do is we are going to, we want to get that 4x squared by itself. So we're going to move this 25 over. So let's go ahead and add 25 to both sides. So I add 25, add 25. We end up with 4x squared equals 25. Um, now we need to get rid of the 4, so we're going to divide both sides by 4, right? We'll divide this by 4, divide this by 4. These cancel out. So on the left-hand side, we're just going to have x squared equals... Now, 25 over 4 isn't going to simplify, so I'm just going to leave it as 25 over 4. You could keep it as a decimal, but if you use your calculator and divide it out, um, we just get 25 over 4. Now, we're not done with this yet. Sorry, I'm going to move down here uh, so we can have a little bit more room. So over here we have x squared equals 25 over 4. Now, how do we get rid of the x squared? We just talked about this. We're going to put the square root on both sides. So we're going to get x squared equals plus or minus square root of 25 over 4. Um, these cancel out, right? And we get x is equal to plus or minus. Now just try to put this in your calculator and you're going to see that we get a terminating decimal. Um, if, you, if we just use kind of some logic on top, what's the square root of 25? You can do that in the calculator. It's going to give you 5. And then what's the square root of 4? The square root of 4 is 2. So when we take the square root, whether you use your calculator or just kind of look at it and figure it out, we get 5 over 2. Now, just don't forget that when you're working in the math homework or anything like that, we need to separate these two solutions using a comma. So we're going to get x is equal to 5 over 2, right, the positive one, and x is negative 5 over 2. Again, we could have gotten those answers by factoring, but um, this is another method. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I have this example right here, but we're not going to do that one. I want to just do one more final example with you. And so we'll zoom until we can get some clean screen. And let's just take a look at this one. x squared minus 7 equals 0. Now later in this course, we're going to learn about simplifying radicals. But since we're just focused on using the square root method, again, what we're going to do here is we add 7 to both sides, right? 
and we're going to get x squared equals 7. Now we need to take the square root of both sides, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, x, and then don't forget your plus or minus. Now this looks like everything we've done up to this point, but I just want to stress this n part, so we have x squared is equal to plus or minus square root of 7. On the left, we're going to just get x, and we get over here. Now take a look at this. When you try to do this in the calculator, it's going to give you a really long, nasty string of decimals. So it, we can't turn these into a fraction. These are what are called irrational numbers. So if we want an exact answer, we really just need to leave this as square root of 7. So our final answer for this one is x is going to be square root of 7 and negative square root of 7. Let me zoom out and talk, take a look at some of those previous ones. Again, these previous problems, like when we take a look up here, you can see we can do the square root of 9. That was really easy to find. Similarly, 25 over 4, that's an easy square root to figure out. That works out to be fractions, a nice fraction like 5 over 2. Um, but when we have something like 7 or, say, 5 underneath a square root, we're just going to leave this in the radical form as x is equal to square root of 7 and negative square root of 7.